public lands in our in our district and beyond the whole Cook County uh, Forest Preserve. Uh, tell us what you've discovered in your role as county commissioner about those public lands and what is then moving to public lands today. Well, the, the beauty of the office that I get elected to is I get to hold two offices. I get to be a county commissioner, but more importantly, I get to be a commissioner of the Cook County Forest Preserve District, a separate government. It's not double dipping. It's and who knows all the good fish? We, we don't get paid for the second one, but uh, it, it's actually the most fun that could be the, the Forest Preserve Commissioner. Yes, we, we, we in Cook County are very fortunate because there were some really bright people 100 years ago who decided that we would put aside land. We have almost 69,000 acres of land with the largest holdings by a local unit of government in the United States. Our forest preserves have trails for horse riders, for bicyclists, for runners, for walkers, people in the water trails. Later today, I'm going to go to a dedication for Ralph Reeves, who was the father of canoeing in the Forest Preserve, who died not too long ago, and we're dedicating a street for him in the city of Chicago, where he ran his canoe business. But the, so yes. National Public Lands Day is a national recognition put together by the U.S. Corps, uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and, and other groups to have people throughout the country uh, last year, there were over 2,000 sites that volunteers worked at. There were over 175,000 volunteers who will work on various sites to protect our public land, to give us the opportunity to appreciate this public land that we all own. And uh, so I'm encouraging people next Saturday, it's National Public Lands Day, and we're doing a, uh, a work day in the morning and afternoon at the Blue Star Memorial Woods, which is uh, over on Lake Street, right at the Wilmette uh, Glenview border, so right at Harms Road. Uh, it's a beautiful woods. We're getting rid of invasive species. We've talked about the buckthorn and the garlic mustard and all the, these other things that have come in. Garlic mustard yeah. sounds well, kind of good. Okay. That's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, these are invasive species which are crowding out our oaks and our hardwoods and what these forest preserves were like before uh, <coughs> we uh, tried to civilize them. You know, it's wonderful when you drive, uh, fly into Chicago to see this uh, big ring of green around uh, our wonderful Chicagoland area. Or if you're at night, a big ring of darkness. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Awesome. Exactly. What is, what's the status of the public lands, not only here but beyond? I mean, is it something that uh, some people might want to privatize or to sell off? Uh, we're really glad to have them, and I would certainly, you know, anything that says national and public is, uh, is those are great words that we are beginning to hear less of. So what do you think will be the future of public lands, uh, whether it be here in uh, Cook County or beyond? Well, when I first got on the board, Mike Quigley was on the county board, and Mike was the great advocate for protecting us against privatization. There were people who had lands to have a corporate name on each forest preserve. There were people who wanted to have concessions. There were people who wanted to build hotels in our forest preserve. I think we've passed policies and we've stopped that. We now have leadership in the forest preserve. Arnold Randall, who's the general superintendent, and Barry Lariah, the assistant general superintendent, are, are people who have appreciation for the land, and we are restoring it to its natural beauty. The other thing we've done is we've figured out how to balance recreation with the use of public lands and, and preserving the land. I mean, we want people in the forest. We want people having picnics there. We want people hiking. We want people canoeing. We want people riding their horses in the forest. But you have to figure out how to balance that. Sure. We've got other people who would like to put zip lines everywhere. We would like to alter anything. Well, yeah. And, and, and we're working uh, to make sure that we have good balance and that opportunity. We still have model airplanes forest preserves in two places in Cook County and have people flying these planes in their, their open fields. We've got to look out, they'll be bringing their drones next thing we well, know. Maybe a model airplane has been a drone. I mean, it's not exactly what they are, they're, they're radio controlled uh, airplanes. I think somebody got the idea for drones. But, but, you know, we're, we're, I just wanted to make a connection. Yeah, we're, we're, we're encouraging more use of the forest preserves in the winter for cross country skiing. Uh, we have 10 golf courses which we've kind of inherited, including including Chick Evans, which is the, the nearest one to us uh, uh, over on uh, uh, Golf Road. But those forest preserve golf courses, we turned over the men, and we did privatize that to Billy Casper, and it has been a boom for us. Because when I got elected, there were three employees of the forest preserve for every hole on our golf courses. 
and one employee in the Forest Preserve for every 10,000 acres of land. Uh, and, and in their mind, that was nuts. But that, so now we have people working in the, in the Forest Preserve making sure our land is And for you, um, how does bringing people together, as you have consistently done, both for the canoe trip and for an event like this one coming up next week, to repair and restore, uh, has that built your own political base to a well, certain degree? I, I never think of it as building my own political base. Oh, come on. The, the, oh, oh, the, the canoe trip she's talking about is on New Year's Day. Yes. At 8 a.m., we, a we are out in the north branch of the Chicago River, and we, we go a five-mile canoe trip. And we had 220 people a year ago. This last uh, New Year's Day, we canceled because of the weather was so bad and, and it was so frigid. We did not want to lose anybody. We actually had President of the Republic fall in the river on New Year's Day two years ago. Whoa. Uh, but, uh, and she was here. Yeah, so, you know, she... A little bit about Cook County baptism for the right. president. And, 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 and the interesting thing was her security person in the canoe with her. We didn't know how to do it. I, <laughs> but, but she's still possibly a, a important candidate. Our work days bring people out and come back. Because we're working with master stewards who have set up work days on a weekly basis. Right. And so when I get groups out like next Saturday, hopefully we'll, we'll bring 30 or 40 people who have never been out there. They like it, they come back, they work with our master stewards throughout the year. And there's nothing, uh, you know, if you're a gardener, and I've seen you, Katie, around here gardening at various times. This is a generous use of the term. You've got a great hand. Yeah, it's here. Use your hands and deal with the dirt and deal with the land. It's a unique experience. And in the Forest Preserve, to deal with the magnificent woods that we have. We have people that are out there collecting seeds right now, so they're going to plant those seeds next year. They, they, they're cutting down to these invasive trees, these buckthorn. It's just, it, it's, it's a positive experience. Yeah. And I, I don't, I realize a uh, few years ago there was a family I, who I'm personally connected with who kind of raised a big stink about uh, the restoration work uh, out their backyard, which was, which is the, the uh, forest preserve. And they actually managed to get it stopped for a while. Uh, this is when Dad Stroke was still with us. Right. Before and I got on the board. It was before you got on the board. that right after I got on the board. Yeah, and that, that probably took just probably conversing with the people, right? Well, it did. You keep trying to educate people on what restoration is. Exactly. But there are people who believe that God intended for the woods to be whatever they are. So that these invasive species are taking over that was the next level of evolution. And it, it really isn't. And, and our, our stewardship is how I think we'll really be judged. And that's why we've got to work on making sure we're doing the right things by the land. Very good. Very good. Uh, one more time, how would people find out more about this next week cleanup event? They, they can go to my website, Sufferden.org, uh, or they can go to the Cook County Forest Preserve website. There, there are, uh, besides the uh, place we'll be working in, the Blue Star uh, Woods, there are a number of other sites throughout Cook County for this National Public Lands Day that we will have stewards and staff to work with people. And I, I really, I think if people come out, they'll, they'll enjoy it. We are fortunate in the district I represent to have these forests which are so near us. And, and we need to get people to use them. Just as a lot of kids never get to the lake, yeah. even though it's right in front of us, yeah. a lot of kids don't get to the forest preserve. And so it's a constant change. And, and the, the Chicago Botanic Garden, which is part of the forest preserve in my district, is one of those places that shares with kids from the city. So we're, we're working on little farm uh, gardens in, in the city with them. And I, I think that this is just one of those good, real good and positive things. Yeah, what a treasure to the Botanic Gardens is. Uh, that sounds great. Now let's switch because we've got you here, uh, Larry Suffernan from Cook County Board. Now we've got a county commissioner. Yeah, board, so. there you go. And uh, I would like to ask you uh, two things that in the remaining time I'd like to talk about, like both the county jail and uh, the county hospital. Uh, and particularly the county hospital, we both interconnect, but in light of uh, the challenge to Obamacare, etc. Well, I, you know, I hope that the, uh, the president is able to convince these Republicans that they are totally off base of what they're trying to oh, do. Oh yeah, that, there's a big chance of that. The best example of what the Affordable Care Act can do is what's going on in the Cook County Health and Hospital System. A year ago we got a waiver which allowed us to 
put together what we call county care, which means we've been signing up for over a year ahead of the official start, people into the uh, coverage of, of Medicaid for those who are single member families. So these are people who don't have children. But yes, uh, and we have signed up 93,000 people so far. We have a, our a waiver gives us 115,000 before December 31st. But once these people are signed up, they're going to be in the program for the rest of their life. Uh, if they, as long as they meet the other criteria of the program. And this is giving people coverage who've never had coverage. We, the county hospital system does a million two hundred and fifty thousand patient visits a year. I mean, we are the largest public hospital system owned by a, a local unit of government in the United States. We're bigger than LA, bigger than anything goes on in New York. Our system is comparable to the VA system within Cook County, and, and, and the quality of care under the leadership of Dr. Ralph Rodriguez, the new president, is phenomenal. Uh, we've changed the, the whole culture of the place. We, I, I think when you go to the Toronto Hospital or any of our 16 clinics, you're, you're seeing a place that's welcoming, that really is, is caring about the holistic health of, of our citizens. So I, at this point, we're counting on the Affordable Health Care Act because it will provide funds that will relieve the taxpayers of Cook County, who shouldn't be the only ones in the state of Illinois, paying for this vast number of people who need health care. And, and it will give us a chance to expand our services to people who really need it. And I, I, so right now, one of the bright spots of the county is our health care system, but it will only be a bright spot as long as there is an affordable care act. Larry, let me ask you, uh, there was a, about a year ago there was a number of clinics that were closed by the mayor here in Chicago. Did that impact the county hospitals? Uh, it did in a, a small way. Most of those clinics were not direct care clinics. They, they were uh, places where you could get shots. And the, the biggest impact was the, those that dealt with mental health. I mean, we have got to figure out a better way to deal with mental health. We see in our emergency room all the time, and it's the busiest emergency room around in Stroker Hospital, people who are there because they're mentally ill and, and they're, they're lost and they're looking for somebody to try to help them. Now, the bigger place where the closing of those clinics has impacted is, is the county jail. Which also has a, a mental health issue. But that's the, the point I was just going to come to. You know, one, one of the strange things in America is that you, we as American citizens have no constitutional right to health care. But the moment you get incarcerated, you have a constitutional right to health care. So the Department of Justice is all over us to provide health care at the county jail. Well, with mentally ill people don't have the options of going to Latino or going to Madden or, or, or going to Elton like they used to. Where do they do? They commit petty crimes, they get into the county jail system with the hope that we can provide the care they need, the medications they need. And we've got to figure out how to do this because our, our population in jail continues to grow. Uh, we're up about 10,200 people this week. Uh, that's right about our, our capacity. Uh, back in 1974, the first time I went to the county jail as a lawyer, the population in the jail was 2,100 people. So you can see the, the growth of the number of people we lock up. But uh, at, at this point, our health care within the jail is as good as it's going to be. But we also have a problem at the jail in that a lot of the people who are getting health care go in and out of the jail, some of them as many as 10 times a year. I mean, while we have 10,200 people Well, they can get their meds. Well, we have 10,200 people there today, but the jail gets about 107,000 people a year that rotate through there. You know, so it's, it's always a different group. Another issue with the jail is the number of people who are locked up for uh, small drug crimes or possession of marijuana. And I know I've seen this, uh, this battle going on between uh, Tony Preckwinkle with Tom Dart on TV with uh, Judge Evans. And uh, you know it was a, it was a bizarre show. What's the status? It's like of that? doing the radio show for yeah, exactly, exactly. But it, uh, what's it, what's going on with that? I mean, you know, we have a decriminalization tendency going on in the country around marijuana, but we still have a lot of people locked up in the county for possession of marijuana. Well, when we passed at the county and at the Forest Preserve a decriminalization uh, ordinance, and uh, it's being used. I mean, a lot of people are being murdered. We don't want to take our police off the street. The city of Chicago is using it too to uh, charge certain people. Uh, 
Right now, Judge Evans, the sheriff, and the president are in a difficult personal relationship. And uh, uh, the president this week is the Supreme Court to intervene. Uh, I'm optimistic that we're going to be able to get all of them to work together. Uh, our goal is to have an efficient criminal justice system. I don't think we'll ever have a situation where the jail will go back to 2,100 people. Unfortunately, the General Assembly has just passed way too many laws, and those laws don't give opportunities for uh, uh, bail. Uh, but you know, I think that we can improve this, and, and it's something that we're all working on. You know, it's about 146 dollars a day to house somebody at the jail. I, I suggested not too long ago that we put together a five million dollar fund. We bail some of these people out ourselves <laughs> so that we can get them into halfway houses that are going to be half the cost of uh, putting them there. Well, it's always a pleasure having you on. I'm going to ask you one more question about the uh, Affordable Health Care Act. Do you think that the Republican opposition to this on a national level has to do with their, a belief that they really think it won't work or they fear that it really will work? I, I think that. Uh, that they aren't thinking like that at all. All they know is that somebody who's contributing to them doesn't like it, and so they're they're opposed to it. I, this is not a thinking Congress. I mean, look at Clinton, uh, Speaker Boehner. Here's a man who knows it's wrong. He goes into his caucus saying, "I'm going to convince him it's wrong," and he comes out and says, "I've been converted." They're, they're, they're just not thinking. Well, I'm glad to hear it. No, I don't mean it in that way. I'm glad to hear that it's. Uh, that we can be critical of the comments. Right. Gary Shepherdin, it's great to have you here. We'll see you out uh, there. You are a position for a while. Let's have a play with you on the floor. Yeah. He's one of the best. Thanks for being here.